things that are lovely about snow. Flakes fall so lightly and slowly they are as delicate as a most tender kiss. Branches are so still, the snow lies on them as if painted by an artist with his finest brush. The snow is of that texture, malleable but firm, whereby one's hands may form it into a perfect sphere, ideal for throwing at the back of a friend's neck. The shadow of a tree falls on the white ground and seems faintly blue. Have you ever noticed that shadows on snow can seem tinged with blue? Yes, I have noticed that, Lieutenant Yukonari. Lieutenant? Shonigan. I thought you were about to say something. Your gaze is very direct. Forgive me. I did not mean to be rude. It's just that... What? Well... I'm not used to palace ways. Indeed. Which is why the Empress has appointed me your guide, your assistant, in the investigation of these thefts. So, where would you guide me to start? With the captain of the palace guard, perhaps? I've already spoken with him and instigated a thorough search of the palace. Is there anyone you've seen display particular unease about the crime? Unease? I've seen much of that. Well, someone, for example, who seemed to suspect they may be a suspect. Well, yes, but Seisha couldn't have Seisha? Another of Her Majesty's ladies and a friend of mine. And innocent. Then why should she think herself a suspect? Foolishness. She told me she felt the Empress had been especially cool with her. And that she'd been in a position to take everything that's disappeared. Even in the captain's room from which his dagger was taken? She is innocent. Lieutenant. I'm sure you're right. Her anxiety, however, may be revealing. I've told you all I know, Shonagon. In secret. I'm afraid the time for secrets is over, Seisho. Secrets between friends? That time is over? The dagger was for ceremony only. Yes. He wore it only for parades or when he was in the throne room. Not often. Most of the time it lay in its place in his room. On a purple cloth by his bedside? He honoured it greatly. It belonged to his father. Hmm, so he told me. He told me also that he is utterly convinced none of his guardsmen would steal the weapon. They would know that if they were caught, the Emperor might have them flogged and imprisoned. But they would also know that the captain himself... He would kill them. The only other people who had access to the room were a few servants... The captain said he could not imagine a servant being so rash, so foolish. But a servant might be mad. A mad servant or a madly jealous lover. The captain has given me no reason to be... Tell us, Seisho, were you in the captain's room the night that the dagger was stolen? Seisho. I was there. But so too was the dagger, in its place, when we... It was gone when we woke up. Then you're saying someone came into the room, took the dagger and left while you lay sleeping? He must have. Or she. Some madly jealous lover. Seisho, the captain has assured Lieutenant Yukonari vehemently that no other woman has been in his room for many months. No one? No one. I am happy for you. Our thief enters a private room where two people lie sleeping and escapes with something so precious it might bring his or her death. And that room is only two short corridors from the Emperor's own private chambers. The Emperor? You can't imagine anyone would dare to... I will have the captain place extra guards there. You must have many stories to tell, Lieutenant, from the wide world of our empire. Riding into the hills to hunt down brigands, banners flying, trumpets blaring. Often we go more quietly than that, Your Majesty. Of course, to take the villains by surprise. And pirates, too. I know the seas are infested with the creatures. I do not go to sea, Your Majesty. But our city ports and coastal villages where they hide and carouse and divide their plunder. Maybe you go into them quietly, too. Or even in disguise, dressed as pirates yourself, perhaps. <laughs> this is an excellent notion, Your Majesty. I will certainly discuss it with my comrades. Do you hear that, My Highness? I do indeed, My Highness. Now, Lieutenant... And, and as payment for my excellent notion, I will have some of your stories. An honour, Your Majesty. You asked to speak with us, Lieutenant, about these palace crimes? Yes, Your Majesty. 
There is something about the nature of these thefts that interests me. And what is that? It is the nature of their escalation. Yes, they've grown very bold. Just so, in that they have moved slowly, tentatively, but surely towards Your Majesties. Perhaps Shonagan could explain further. The first thing stolen were my own paper and ink, mere trifles, then a mirror from another lady, then the scales from your own kitchen, Majesties. Next, a dagger from a man whose duty it is to protect you. And finally... The Empress's loot. The crimes have been moving in a slow spiral inward towards Your Majesty's inner circle. All of which suggests the thief is outrageously bold, even mad. Sometimes, in a case like this, it is helpful to talk with those close to the victims of the crime. Are you saying you suspect someone inside our inner circle, as you call it? So far there is no particular suspect, but although Your Majesties have given us permission to speak with anyone in the palace, we thought it best to ask your specific permission to speak with Tozami. Tozami? The suggestion was Shonagan's. Shonagan? You know what Tozami means to me? Yes, Your Majesty. But the Lieutenant expressed his wish to understand more about the ways of the palace, to gain some insight into the inner circle. Tozami was servant to my mother, then my nanny and my governess. She is my oldest and dearest companion. So I understand, Your Majesty. I hope you do, Lieutenant. You will be delicate. I will not have her troubled. And if there is the merest hint that you suspect her of a crime against me, we will have a new investigator. Yes. I was devoted to the mother of our Empress. When the child was born, my devotion doubled. I loved her as my own. If that is not a blasphemous thing to say... It is a pious and loving thing to say. She was, I have no doubt, an intelligent and quick-learning child. Of course. And now she's Empress, the wife of our Emperor. Lieutenant Yukinari, you're here to investigate thievery. What has my love and devotion to my Empress to do with that? I have never been in the palace before. This I know. Its ways, its custom, what is done and not done, said and not said... It's very mood. These are all strange to me. I can imagine. I am trying to fathom what poison might have altered that mood. Poison? Someone has shown no love or devotion for your empress. Perhaps he or she may prove equally disloyal to your emperor. He or she has already proved that. Two days ago, Lieutenant, many of us watched the emperor in the garden. Yes. He began with a simple snowball and rolled it on the ground rolled it round and round the garden so it grew and grew. Even when it grew heavy, he would accept no one's help. He rolled on and on until it was almost as high as himself. Then he climbed atop it and sang one of his ancestors' battle songs. Every face in that garden, including, of course, the face of my empress, showed love and delight. Yes, I remember. Love and delight. Anyone who would poison such a mood, as you call it, is either mad or possessed of a devil. Things that are strange about snow. I touch a handful of flakes to my mouth and they are warm as lips. Whiteness on black branches, it's like writing I cannot quite decipher. Someone has rolled a huge snowball towards me. It becomes smaller and smaller as it approaches. I notice that a shadow is tinged with blue, and he says, Look, Jonagon, your shadow lays blueness on the snow. I've been you man in your sleep. Even when I can't make out the words, it always sounds like poetry. Lord, I don't know, Bo. Who else might be here? I'm sorry, my lord. I, I'm still so sleepy. Is it late? I have a little while yet. I am to meet the lieutenant. What's he like, this Yukonari? He's clever, I think. But clumsy in a way. Our life is another world to him. I should think it is. I've been asking about him. 
His father was a carpenter. A carpenter? He made furniture. A craftsman, maybe. Some of them are considered almost artists. Well, craftsmen, perhaps, but still, he made furniture. He has a most direct gaze. Quite disconcerting. He gazed at you? Insolently? No, I don't think so. It was more... wandering. I don't understand what you were looking for with dear old Tazami. Well, as I said, to gain some understanding of the mood around their majesties. The mood is one of devotion. But not for everyone, it would seem. The captain's dagger was taken from a room only two corridors from the emperor's own rooms. The loot was hanging on a wall next door to the emperor. Is the criminal inching towards the emperor? You can't imagine some threat to his person that is unthinkable. But nothing is unthinkable. I don't question the love and delight you and Tazami spoke about. That is what you experienced, that is what you saw. But appearances can deceive. So too can voices. One morning, recently, I heard a man on horseback reciting poetry, love poems, in a beautiful carrying voice. When I looked out, he was a muddy peasant. I'm from peasant stock myself. And you know poetry. I heard your father was some kind of craftsman. He was a farmer, and he made tables and bedsteads. Good tables and bedsteads. And now his son is a lieutenant in the Imperial Police. Is it ever like the Emperor said? You and your companions with trumpets blaring and banners unfurled? No, not so far. But who knows? I've never investigated the theft of an Empress's loot before. What have you investigated? Most recently, seven cases of rape, torture and murder. Oh, forgive me, that was... Ladies? No. Farmers, wives and daughters taken from the fields. I do apologise, Charlie. It was rather clumsy. One might say brutal. And you had that too direct gaze again. Another apology. But I cannot rid myself of the feeling that... What feeling? But that I've seen you somewhere before. It is a persistent feeling. In an imperial procession, perhaps. I often accompany Her Majesty. Well, I haven't seen such a thing since I was a child. And it was a different Empress. Maybe it was a dream. The memory, if that's what it is, has that quality. I don't think we should be discussing dreams, Lieutenant. What next in our investigation? Our investigation? I like that. I've asked to speak to Lord Tadanogu. Tadanogu? Well, you and he are friends, I believe. I am honoured to say that his lordship admires my poetry, my wit, as he's pleased to call it, and that I have a mind of my own. I'm sure his admiration is justified. It's go inside. It's growing colder. And Lord Tadanobu admires several ladies, not to mention his wife. Things about eyes that may startle. They may glitter like snow. They may glow as with heat. They are darkness moving. Their gaze is wandering. It may cause one's hands to feel somewhat boneless. When he looks at the ground, one's own feet may almost stumble. In memory, their look can have the quality of a dream. <laughs> <laughs> 